Hello guys, first of all, thank you for being here. Thank you for your interest in watching uh, my lecture, which is called Challenges and Opportunities in the Study of Parasite Diversity at Broad Scales. I am Paulo Mateus. I was a PhD student here in Brazil until a couple of days ago, uh, but now I defended my thesis, which is um, pretty nice. And during my PhD work, I was trying to understand what drives parasite alpha and beta diversity at broad spatial, spatial scales. And I had helmets of amphibians as our biological models. And we followed two main uh, research axes. The first was focused on understanding parasite alpha diversity, more specifically, the direct and indirect effects of climate on parasite alpha diversity. Both climate and host alpha diversity are important predictors of parasite richness at broad scales, but they are normally treated separately. Um, however, there is, a, uh, there is an interaction between those uh, two variables, so ignoring it can lead us to um, wrong conclusions about what drives parasite alpha diversity at broad scales. And the second in research axis was focused on parasite beta diversity. We were trying to understand how the relative effects of climate space, space and host beta diversity as drivers of parasite beta diversity uh, vary between scales, between realms, and between both host and parasite groups. So to build our data set, we did a systematic search of literature on Google Scholar and Web of Science, uh, where we combined uh, the helminth or parasite, which were the, the groups uh, of parasites we were interested. These are the, the, the parasitic worms and combined it with the current um, living amphibian orders, which are the, the anurans, the salamanders and the sicilians. So this is the geographical spread of our data set. We got data for more than 600 uh, populations of anurans and more than uh, 90 populations of salamanders. For anurans, we got data on more than 300 species, while for salamanders, around 30. So back to our first uh, research axis, uh, which was which is focused on direct and indirect relationships. Um, it is already published in Global Ecology and Biogeography, so go check it out if you want or email me, uh, whatever is better for you. Um, and for this chapter or this part of our research, we use piecewise SEM to integrate those direct and indirect uh, effects of climate and host richness. And this is what we found. Uh, it's it's not that complex, but uh, I have no time to explain it all for you. So I'm going to focus on the indirect relationships we found. We found that annual precipitation and temperature seasonality have uh, an effect on parasite alpha diversity that is mediated by their effects on hosts. Um, the effect of annual precipitation is positive and the indirect effect of temperature seasonality is negative. So um, the mechanisms behind these relationships are probably related to the host reproductive mode in the first place. Um, given that annual precipitation uh, is related to the availability of water bodies and wet environments, um, these are probably uh, factors that affect positively the host richness. And also physiological tolerance, because amphibians are very sensitive to temperature extremes, uh, to changes in temperature, um, and also to water availability. So probably these indirect effects mediated by host richness are related to how hosts respond to, uh, to water in relation to their reproductive mode and also to physiological tolerance. So the take-home message 
is that future studies on parasite alpha diversity should um, include both the direct the, and the indirect effects among the predictors uh, so we can go further in our macroecological theory in relation to what drives parasite diversity at broad scales. In relation to our second research axis, uh, which is focused on, focused on parasite paradiversity, um, it is accepted in a special edition of Philosophical Transactions um, on Disease Macroecology, so soon you can check it out as well. And for these chapters, we use GDMs uh, to test the, how the, the, the relative effects of climate, space, and host biodiversity vary in relation to scale, realm, and groups. And to test for the scale, realm, and groups effect, uh, we used, we, we calculated, we fitted a different uh, GDM models to different subsets of our data and to assure or or to be more secure that these the differences we found were not just due to using different subsets of our data set we also run uh, um, cross-validation procedures we had five questions for these um, research and um, I'm going to show you two of them because, again, um, time is short. But the first of them was how do the predictors of parasite turnover vary among realms? And we found that temperatures extreme, temperature extremes, extremes are more important in the, in the Arctic. As you can see here, the minimum temperature of the coldest month was the, the strongest variable driving uh, parasite turnover both for nematodes and trematodes. On the other hand, spatial distance was more important in the neotropics. As you can again see here, spatial distance was the, the strongest predictor of parasite turnover, both for nematodes and trematodes in the neotropics. And probably the mechanisms are related to physiological tolerance in the Nearctic and factors that in, um, increase specialization and speciation in the neotropics. For instance, in the neotropics, the climate is more stable and it is more geographically complex. Both factors affect the range sizes of hosts. So um, there may be more opportunities for host speciation and followed by parasite a specialization and speciation. This can, this can explain why um, parasite turnover uh, responds more strongly to space than to climate. Second, um, we wanted to, to understand how the predictors of parasite turnover vary among host families. And we had three main families in our data set, the Hanidae family, Buffonidae family, and Elidae family. Um, and we found that these families, the, the parasites of these families, they respond to different predictors. Uh, the Buffonidae parasites, they respond to spatial distance, while the Elidae parasites respond to spatial distance and precipitation of the wettest, wettest month. And the Renidae parasites responded to mean diurnal temperature uh, range. The separate analysis, they were just the, the they were just a curiosity. We just wanted to check whether our results were affected by which host taxonomic subset we selected. And we found that uh, the three families have distinct patterns. So um, these may be due to differences in life history of these families. Uh, Renids are mostly semi-aquatic, Buffonids are mostly more terrestrial amphibians, and Halids are uh, more arboreal. So these uh, differences in life histories in life history among these families may explain why selecting different host taxonomic subsets affect the observed uh, results. This is actually a, a great opportunity for future research. Uh, maybe we, we need to add the, the, the host um, life history in our studies of parasite paradiversity.
So the take home messages of these part of our research are different processes drive parasite turnover in distinct bioregions. So we need to explore further why different bioregions have distinct factors affecting uh, parasite turnover like biogeographical factors, historical factors. We need to go to deep further into these uh, things. And also, uh, we need to go beyond host identity when studying parasite biodiversity. Um, this is mostly based on our separate analysis on the three families. Um, probably, we need to go beyond that. We need to explore, we need, we need a way to include host uh, life history in the uh, in the models. So um, the holy grail of ecology as a science is to understand what drives species diversity across space and time. But uh, most ecological theory are built uh, having free living organisms as, um, as models. But parasites, they were for much time left out of the spotlight but some estimates suggest that they represent around um, 30 to 50 percent of uh, the animal tree of life. So despite some challenges imposed by parasites living in association with other organisms, as we saw here, uh, we, we may need to include some uh, additional levels of complexity into our models. Um, but despite those challenges, there are lots of opportunities to be explored and for progress in our uh, macroecological theory when dealing with uh, parasites. So uh, thank you very much for your patience. Um, here's my email and my Twitter. I'd like to thank you and thank you all these guys in the bottom of my slide. So let's go to the questions.